Aloha everybody, Kai Waza with you, John Charles. Welcome back to my channel and another video, haul video, record haul. Uh, two parts to it. First part is uh, some records I got from the Netherlands today from my friend Fran, who uh, knows I have a thing for like fake Tijuana V bands and other things. And I, uh, he sends me some things sometimes that he gets kind of on the cheap there um, because they have a lot of their own imitation Tijuana bands and stuff. Uh, and I sent him some things from here occasionally. Um, not something I want to get into the habit of doing with a lot of people because like postage is outrageous overseas for these things. <laughs> like the records are cheap, but the postage is not. But anyway, I got a package of some stuff from him. Um, that I'm going to show you first today. Uh, okay, so here's some stuff from the Netherlands, Fiesta Mexicana. These are like sort of fake Tijuana brass bands. Isn't that great? Tijuana Beatles. You know, this record, there was some discussion of Merjum's Dream in Tijuana on one of the sites. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. But I think there was some discussion about this record, that it's it's an Ameri the, it has an American release under some other name or something. I don't know. There was some discussion about it, but really weird, right? Merjum's Dream in Tijuana. <laughs> I did take out a couple things I had already, so... Um, Tropicana Amsterdam. Interesting. I was excited to get this one because uh, I didn't have it. It's a version of the musical South Pacific. This is a European rendition with the Mike Sam singers that I did not have. So very cool. And now we go to a uh, second part of the video, which is uh, today was the first of, I think, four days or so. It's the next couple of weekends of the Martin Luther King uh, Friends of the Hawaii Library book and music sale. Big sale. It's very big, very dangerous for people like me. Um, <laughs> and you might ask yourself, John Charles, you know, you have to move here. Before the end of February, you got to be in a different apartment. And uh, why would you be getting more, more records? But I mean, the truth of the matter is, A, it is an addiction, and that speaks for itself. And B, uh, you know, if you're moving 3,000 records, what's another box? I mean, really, you know, what's the diff? So I went today. I was conservative, though, I have to say. I didn't even look at the books. Like, normally I look at the Hawaiiana books, and I love to look, but I don't really have time. I got some stuff going on this afternoon and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to um, look at the easy listening records and the Hawaiian records and get out of there. And I just went through new HCDs very, very quickly. Um, but anyway, I got, I don't know how many I got. I got a lot. But uh, everything I got was either $1 or $2. They did have a lot of records that were, you know, 4 through like $6, or whatever. I just didn't get anything like that. Which meant, you know, certain artists that like your Frank Sinatra's and stuff, you're not going to get like in the one and two dollar thing. But my whole thing is cheap lounge, right? That's the thing. So everything I bought was one or two dollars, except for a couple of Hawaiian Pacific records, which I'm going to show you right up front. Those are for my collection um, and they were more expensive, but I wanted to get them because I didn't have them and I wanted them. Okay, sorry if you're seeing my apartment and it's kind of a mess because it is kind of a mess. <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm getting boxes and trying to figure stuff out and starting to pack some things and whatever. Don't know where I'm going yet, but for an apartment, haven't gotten an apartment yet, looked at some places. Anyway, uh, let me show you the first uh, records I got were Hawaiian ones, Polynesian ones, and uh, they were not one or two dollars, but I got them because I didn't have them, and therefore my collection. It's a Japanese record, Sunset in Hawaii, by a group called the Blue Hawaiians, and isn't that cool? Showing the inside of this Japanese recording facility or whatever, but uh, yeah, I wanted to, to get that one. Also want to pick this one up, which I did not have. Welcome to Tahiti, George Tumahai and his Tahitians. Love the cover on this one. It's also kind of some cool artwork on the back. 
And this one I got, uh, well, because I, you know, don't really have much music from Micronesia. It's usually not, or this, is this Micronesia or Melanesia? Um, Gilbert and Elise, spectacular. Gilbert and Elise Islands actually they were a British colony thing and they separated in the 70s and had independence. And there are, uh, I don't remember which is which now, but one is Tuvalu and one is Kiribati. That's a shame because I've been there. I've been to Tuvalu. Anyway, yeah, curious about that. So let me preface the uh, records from the Easy Listening Records by saying that uh, I really emphasized this time because I did put pull out things and put things back. I really was somewhat conservative for myself. Um, and I really wanted to focus on vocalists and you know vocal groups because I knew I had so much instrumental music and not nearly as much vocal groups. And I usually program moody mood music 50-50 vocals and instrumentals, not always, but usually that's the program I have running. So like I wanna, you know, keep refreshing the vocals on there. So this first batch, which is, I think, the majority, is uh, vocals. I really focused on that. I pulled out a bunch of instrumental stuff. I mean, I still got a bunch of instrumental stuff, but I pulled out a bunch and put it back because I thought, no, you know, let's not go insane. So, I and I focused on uh, vocalists, vocal albums that I knew I did not have for sure. Not ones that were questionable. Doris Day sings a new collection of songs. I had no idea who this woman was, Mara Lynn Brown, but they had two records from her. So I thought, well, you know, they were $2. I will try it. Marie Chevalier. I'm coming across a lot of McGuire sisters records. I had no idea they recorded that many records. I don't really know who this is. I feel like I should, but he's a singer and I don't have it. We're going to get it. How about this? Not one, but two records from the Anita Kerr singers, Burt Kempfert. These are all Burt Kempfert songs that she has recorded, including like a swing in safari. I'm really looking forward to hearing that. I love Anita Kerr singers. I mean, hardcore. And this one, have you ever seen this one? I've never seen this one. I mean, yeah, I just, Anita Kerr can do no wrong. I had a Christmas record by this guy, he's British, nothing else, and I thought, well, for a buck, let's get, let's get it. Pat Boone's always good. I love Robert Goulet, didn't have this one. This one was interesting. Four freshmen have a lot of their stuff, but this is a much later recording by them. Um, as you can see, they're very far from being freshmen. Uh, and it's, you know, an older song cycle. So, yeah, interesting. I don't know. Vic Damone, love his voice. And this is like a later Vic Damone from the 70s. And here's one that's going to surprise you next. If you're like an Exotica music person or whatever. Marnie Nixon, people. Marnie freaking Nixon. Who is Marnie Nixon? If you don't know, if you listen to a lot of Exotica and a lot of easy listening records as well, and they have a, well, often have a, sometimes a female voice solo singing very high, wordlessly going, oh, you know, whatever like that. Uh, nine out of 10 times, that's Marnie Nixon. She did a lot of them, and she has had a very, uh, I don't know if she's still alive, I think she is, I don't know, uh, a very clear and sweet, beautiful, non-annoying voice to sing that high and at high of a register. So she had a lot of work, and she's on a lot of Exotica albums doing uh, that kind of wordless high female vocal and uh, but she didn't you know do a lot of recordings that i've ever come across ever on her own some christmas ones that are very old that she did and uh, this is the first one i've come across of hers i was like oh my gosh for two dollars we are so getting marnie nixon 
This one, interesting too. I like Andy Williams. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, but this is not like a rehash or whatever. This is Andy Williams, Greatest Love Classics with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, recorded in 1984. Um, check out this playlist. I mean, I have never, I knew nothing of this album. I've never heard of it. Maybe it sucks the big one. I don't know, but wow, fascinating. Also, here's, you gotta love Mel Torme, later Mel Torme, you gotta love him. Okay, a little celebrity exploitation going on here. Richard Chamberlain, who I guess is actually a good singer. I had this, I think it got lost in the flood in an earlier, like this is a reissue of it, but yeah. And this one, who knew? I didn't even, I, I had to pull it out of the cover to even know, like, what is this? By George. It's George Hamilton. I mean, Mr. Suntan, you know. Who knew? I had no idea. He even did an album. More celebrity. It's time for Regis. Regis Philbin. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. That's amazing. A lot of very old songs he's doing. Rosemary Clooney, Harry James, and a very late Ray Conniff. I had this a long, long time ago. A um, long time ago. I don't know what happened to it, but... Yeah, look at that track list. Ray Conniff. So those are the vocal albums I got. So now we'll look at the instrumentals. So these are the instrumental records. I did get quite a few there. I was, uh, and like the others, everything was either one or two dollars, nothing more than that. Uh, and I did pull out a bunch of stuff and put it back <laughs> instrumentally because I just wanted to make sure I was not, I was getting stuff I didn't have already that I was absolutely sure or that was really interesting to me. Um, and I wanted to be able to just be able to carry it back on the bus and not call an Uber. Not that that matters, but I've just been spending money I don't have lately. Okay, Charlie Bird. Have to get that. There was some cool, like, 70s, you know, late 60s, 70s, easy listening orchestral stuff that has, like, kind of psychedelic songs on it that I was very curious to get, like the ones I'm showing you right now. Ranwood, this is interesting. Ray Anthony on Ranwood. Look at the playlist for Ray Anthony, Soul Serenade, Tough. Interesting. This was interesting too, 21 Channel Sound. They, they did a whole bunch of records, but never saw this one. Midnight Tokyo, the Tokyo Boys. This is a big band. Um, Gatefold. Yeah, I just, very curious. I don't know how this is gonna be. Another one I don't know, Red Skelton Conducts. Music from the heart. I mean, and I don't know these songs, right? For the most part or at all. Actually, now that I'm looking at them, these must all be either his compositions or things written for it. Mystic Mood Orchestra, Another Stormy Night. Not a stormy night, another stormy night. Interesting. More sort of psychedelic orchestra. This had an interesting track list. This is why I got this. Again, had some more very 70s songs on it. Love James Last. Happy to see this one. Sort of a Tijuana V. I think I had this that got destroyed in the flood because I, I want, I did not hear it yet. Coming across some Richard Claterman, which I'm kind of happy to come across. These were still in the shrink. I took the shrink off because I had no use for it, but 
How about that? Yeah. Beautiful condition, these ones. Luis Alcaraz and his orchestra. This is just easy listening. I wasn't 100% sure I didn't have this one, but for $1, I didn't want to, to miss out on it. And this one I was interested to, um, just because reading the notes, it's, it is solo, Andre Previn with no accompaniment and only a vocal chorus with him, voices. I just thought that might be interesting, I don't know. All right, so that's it. That is me feeding my addiction. I will probably not be going back to the sale uh, tomorrow or maybe, I don't know, maybe not tomorrow. Um, not next weekend because I'm working Saturday and Sunday during the daytime and afternoon and I, there, I won't have time to go. So, which is kind of a blessing, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I look forward to comments you might have below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.